Welcome back guys. Today is going to be fun because we're going to continue to talk about welding table fundamentals. And on today's project, we're going to be working on the sci-fi office space railing. It's going to be a fancy light fixture. There's some tricky stuff about it, but I want to show you how we're going to build it right here on this fixture table. So this is what I'm going to be building. It looks pretty simple. It's a little L bracket. It's a section of the railing. And the important part about it is that it's not completely flat. The next thing is that I'm not going to use this tape measure on this entire project. Why? Well, because it's not really needed. This table is my tape measure and the set of drawings that I have here basically tell me where to put all my stops, pins, fixtures, and I can just plop these in place and we can build as we go. So you're probably wondering how I got this fixture placement drawing. Well, it's actually pretty easy. It all started back in CAD. I have all these stairs already modeled into this 3D space. It was as simple as isolating the component that I wanted and dropping it onto the virtual fireball fixture table in another CAD model. And from here, I can view each individual piece and place virtual fixtures all around the component, giving me precise tooling locations. With this style of uh, fixturing, I have a cut length drawing for all my material and then a fixture drawing. But since I already have all my material cut, we won't be talking about that. Now, what we wanna do, because we're turning up on the end of our little bracket here, I wanna set some tower blocks. Now, what is a tower block? This is a tower block. And we're gonna start with these bad boys. This is gonna basically make a extended surface of our table, but coming up the other direction. Now, these are 14 inches tall. They're made of cast iron. They're extremely heavy. They're well built, they're all machined, they're perfectly 90, and now I have a sturdy platform to build off of in a different direction. But the first thing you're gonna notice is that I have a grid of A to Z. There's 26 holes on this table. These are hole ID locations. Now going this direction, there's 50 holes stretching from one end of the table to the start. It's the 50th hole at the end of the table. So now I have a grid. So everything gets fastened down with this tacking bolt. As you turn the knob, these balls expand and they lock this bolt and whatever's in between here to the table. So what I'm gonna start with is placing these blocks exactly where the plans tell me. I'm at row 22 and 23, all the way to D. Put it in this hole. And then the second block. So we'll put that into place. Now by putting the towers here, I have a 90 degree wall with a whole bunch of holes that match the table but these are on one inch hole spacings, which is gonna be handy a little bit later. We're gonna utilize that resolution there. Now the next drawing calls out for another block over here, setting the width of this. So I can see that this block is in row 29 and 30, also at D. So just like that, good to go. Now I've created two opposing faces with holes in here, and we're gonna build in between these. So now we need to look at our fixture map. And from here, I can see I need to place some tooth blocks down on the table. You can see this first hole is my ID hole, and it lines up with S. And if we come down here, eight. The component we're gonna use is this, the tooth block. This system allows you not to mess up at all. This system doesn't need a tape measure because not only do we have a hole ID, I have fixture locations. If you look at the way it's set up, this first hole lines up in the washer with the slot, and this is called zero position. Now, every time we jump a tooth, this body moves forward one eighth of an inch, all the way to two and a half inches extension. So all we need to do is drop our locking bolt and our washer in the corresponding hole. S, eight, and match a quarter of an inch extension coming out the side, which is right there. Drop it in the hole, and just like that, this fixture is in the exact location that it needs to be to have everything perfect. No tape measures necessary. It's dialed in, ready to go. And then to keep this from spinning, all we need to do is drop this pin in the second hole, and that squares this entire fixture up to the grid. Now you're probably saying, Jason, I have fixtures that look like this. Well, I call these infinity slots. Now the problem with this fixture, everybody thinks these infinity slots are the greatest thing ever to be devised when it comes to fixture table because you can move it anywhere you want. Now, I would completely argue with you that this is the worst thing ever because it can move anywhere you want. 
when you drop the pins in with these guys, how do you know exactly where you're at? There's nothing to reference it from. Even if there are measurements on the side, how do you know where are you? There's nothing on the bolt to line anything else up with. There might be some grid lines maybe on the table, but they could be very finicky and you might be off just a little bit. So as I set these fixtures up, some of you guys have noticed that these are a two-part fixture. The tooth blocks are the chassis, and then you can change out for riser heights for whatever job comes your way. The drawings call out for two blocks right here, but it really isn't necessary. So I switched to one and put a 90 degree block on there. This is basically my endo stop for my material. Don't really need two, just one good one that covers a large distance. So I can convert the tooth block to do that. Got these fixtures all located in the right spot. Now the next thing we want to look at is these 45s. We're going to apply the same technique we did up here on the 45. It doesn't really matter because this slot's large enough to clear this hole. This fixture will slide on the 45. No measuring required. Remember, it's the first hole closest to the riser is the location hole. And it says that I am in Q23. Tooth block is extended 3 quarters of an inch. Next one is 26N, that hole right there. Remember, this goes by extension. How far out is the tooth block extended? And that's 3 quarters of an inch right there. So there's not a lot of room to put two tooth blocks in here, but I can do the same thing with one. You can pick the direction that the dog leg goes. Just remove the screws and then flip it over. So everything's looking good on the table. All the easy stuff is done. Now we need to start turning up. I need to put a piece of tube right here and I need to hold it at the correct angle and I need to hold it at the correct elevation and I need to hold the correct in and out distance because this is going to be a critical measurement because it ties into other things. And I have several of these to do and I need them all to match. So how I'm going to do this is not much different from what we did on the table. Got a really simple CAD model right here. And as you can see, this requires a fence block, just like that. And the unique thing about these is you can move the pins to adjust for the two inch hole centers or the weird diagonal hole center. And as this requires, is I need to drop this fence pin in the first hole and the third hole, just like that. Now, the reason why I started with these tower blocks originally is because I wanted these to be fixed and everything we design is gonna build off these because they're kind of a, they're a monument. They really don't have a lot of adjustment and you always kinda of wanna build away from them because I treat them like the table itself. So that's why I started with them and this constrained everything else as it builds out. So all I'm gonna do is put this fence plane in, which we already have here, and then I'm gonna have a tooth block and the tooth block is exactly like we did it on the table. I can see what holes I'm gonna put it in and how far out it's extended. It looks like it's extended 7 eighths of an inch. How easy is this? Just a little bit of CAD work. I'm on the second row. We're on the hole 1, 2, 3 from the left. Hole 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, up. There we go. Okay. Move it to 7 eighths of an inch. Boom, one more tooth. There you go. And then I'm just going to repeat and put a block right here on this side, just like that. I got my 45, my endo stop. There you go. So I'm dropping all my pieces into my little fixture here and I'm noticing there's some problems. Not with my fixture, but with my cutting and the dimensions that I have cut my material to. As you notice, there's some miters on the end and there's a lot of opportunity here to screw up. This tube gets set down right here and it gets butt up to this stop. Now the next chain in this weldment is this piece and it gets set right here. My miter right here is not correct. I'm off a degree or two, causing the tips to touch. But what the problem is, is now this makes this too long. And then this miter doesn't match up, which makes this joint weird. And then if I need to make this adjusted, it just keeps going around and around and around to where nothing works. <laughs> because this one miter is wrong. So this is no big deal. I'm just gonna take this to the sander and I'm gonna straighten it out and get it corrected. And that way it shortens this whole chain up. Okay, I'm liking that. So you can see much better. So I'm clamping all the tubes in place with these Mantis grip pliers. The beauty is most of the body is shifted to one side. So if I need weld accessibility in an area, I can flip the plier around and move the body away. 
So much like this, you can tell that the body is inside of this weldment and I want to weld inside here. That's not good. So I can flip it around the other direction and move the bulk of the plier out of my way. So one of the questions I get asked is, what happens when you're done welding? What do you do with it? Because obviously you can't reach every weld while it's in the fixture. And the simple answer is take it out. This is an irregular shape, so I can't flip it over and put it back into the fixture. So the only option I have is to remove everything and then just weld what I missed. Everybody says, how many clamps do you need? All the clamps. <laughs> Hopefully you guys learned something much like I do every time I do this. So when you watch these videos, I'm sure you have more questions all about fixturing and the team and I want to help you do it. So go here to the Fireball Forum. We've created a section all about welding and fixturing where you can have your questions answered. And I'll see you guys on the next welding fundamentals video that we do on the fixture table.